Aloha, I'm Mary Beth Tyson, counselor and hypnotherapy instructor. And I'm Eric T. Richter, publisher and editor. Welcome, Welcome to, to Maui, Maui Wellbeing. In each of our shows, we interview talented alternative healers from all over Maui, and then we experience short demonstrations of their work. Today we're at Maui Herbs, an Ayurvedic healing center located on Lapoa Street in Kihei, and we'll be interviewing Jackie and Dave Reed. You ready? I am. Looking forward to it. Dave Reed is a clinical Ayurvedic specialist who trained at the California College of Ayurveda. He has been a master herbalist for 35 years and a chiropractor for 25 years. He is also a Reiki master and DNA healer. He offers select herbs, Ayurvedic treatments, consultations, and informal classes. Jackie Reed is Dave's wife and is also a clinical Ayurvedic specialist. She also trained at the California College of Ayurveda. She originally comes from the Philippines and has integrated her herbal training with her grandmother's traditional folk healings. She is also a certified medical intuitive, a DNA healer, and a Reiki master. Their daughter, Amy Tanthman, has followed the family tradition of healing. She is a massage therapist, a panchakarma technician, and an Ayurveda practitioner. Dave and Jackie, welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Dave, what exactly is Ayurveda healing? Ayurveda literally means the science of life. And it's the ancient healing system of India. It goes back about four or 5,000 years. And it uses light, sound, herbs, aromatherapy, uh, lifestyle changes, dietary changes, all to rebalance the body and allow a person to regain their health. Jackie, how did you get interested in Ayurvedic medicine? Well, I actually grew up with Ayurveda. My grandmother practiced Ayurveda. But um, I really didn't get into it in the sense of learning it from an educational system until Dave decided that he wanted to incorporate some kind of Eastern medicine into his chiropractic practice. And so he looked into Tibetan medicine and Chinese medicine and Japanese medicine and he realized that Ayurveda was the basis for all these Eastern medicines. So he decided to go to school for Ayurveda. So we went to California College of Ayurveda. And when he went, I decided to go with him. And so I came back to my roots. So Jackie, how is it the same and how is it different from standard Western medicine? Well, Ayurveda is based on an esoteric type medicine. And so it is, it's a system that the Western medicine is just beginning to recognize. So Ayurveda has been around for five or 6,000 years. It's actually the oldest medical system in the world. And what we do is we look at your surroundings and we look at the natural healing. So it's all naturally based. So it's more like a holistic healing way it is. of looking at body, mind, and spirit exactly. simultaneously. Thank you. Yeah. It's actually um, working with the patient rather than um, treating them. So we try to go to the root of the base of the problem, of the imbalance, rather than uh, just covered up with some kind of medication. Very good. Great. Dave, what role do herbs play? And Ayurvedic healing. They're basically a stepping stone. They're our first step to get the person to start to rebalance. And after that, we count on dietary and lifestyle changes to complete it, because we don't want people to stay on any medicines or any herbs forever. But the main uh, difference between Eastern and Western medicine um, is that for Western, med Western herbalism, if somebody has a headache, they're given willow bark. If somebody has a headache in Ayurveda, we go and give them something for the elimination system, something for digestion, something for circulation, something for the nervous system, and something for the headache. So we'd go and blend together a combination that would address all those things and the headache. It's very comprehensive. Huh. Yes. Very interesting. Thank you. So Jackie, I know detoxification program is a big part of what you do at Maui Herbs. And especially after the holidays, why is it important for people to detoxify and what does your program encompass? 
Well, first of all, we know that during the holidays they all eat and drink too much. And it brings up some, for some people, it brings up emotional trauma from their childhood. And so it's a good idea. So it's a perfect time to balance your system out and release all those toxins that you've accumulated, whether it's emotional toxins or physical toxins, meaning eggnog and, <laughs> <laughs> and all those things. So um, we have, we have a detox program that's called Ayurveda, uh, Panchakarma for Ayurveda. And the Panchakarma is a wonderful comprehensive cleanse and detox. There are three stages in Panchakarma. The first one is called Purvakarma, which is a preparation phase. And this uh, stage can be varied. It can be varied from three days, let's say, to up to 30 days if you wanted to. Very few people do it that long, but usually five or six days is sufficient. And during that time, the person is given a specific dish, a cleansing dish, to eat during that period, and they're giving a, a bunch, of, bunch of herbs and some medicated ghee, ghee being clarified butter, which we cook herbs in. And during this phase, they're getting um, herbal massages, and sometimes shirdara, the warm oil on the forehead, which is a wonderful therapy, mm -hmm. and then the herbal steams. And um, if, if, if it can get pretty um, expensive, so depending on the budget and the time of the person, we can actually do a take-home program. So someone can do it in their own home and give their own um, equivalency to what we would do over in the center. But then um, the, the second phase of this bunch of karma would be the purge day. And that's the day that you're going to fast. And that's the day that you're going to take our formula. And you're going to eliminate all the toxins that you have been able to release from your organs and your skin and your tissues. And then the third phase is going to last for five days. And during that phase is actually the rejuvenation phase. Because whenever you come out of a cleanse, you don't want to just jump right back into your old die style. You, know, you want to slowly inch back into it. <laughs> so is the purge thing uncomfortable? Do you have to like not do anything all day long but purge? Or no. What happens? No. You need to uh, slow down in your life a little bit because you, it, this is, you focus on yourself. This is a spiritual, emotional, and physical plant. So you don't want to give yourself time to release the emotional toxins, and you want the spiritual uplift that you usually experience during Panchakarma. But um, you can work. I work when I do Panchakarma. They work when he does Panchakarma. You just want to back off, and you, you obviously are not going to go out to dinner with friends. Right. and have a glass of wine and all that. You're not going to do that. And you're going to plan your Panchakarma at a time when you don't have company staying with you or... or, a, or a lot of outside stimulation. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You talked a little bit about going into business together. What's that like to be married and in business together? And Dave, what are Jackie's unique gifts that she brings? Well, first of all, Jackie and I work very well together. Uh, and we love each other's company. We're our best friends. And as for Jackie's unique gifts, well, Jackie is very empathic and compassionate. And she has a unique ability to, as she's working with somebody, to determine what's the best venue uh, to go and whether it's emotional, physical, spiritual, to go and put together a comprehensive program that addresses everything that's going on with the person to allow for the maximum amount of healing. And Jackie, what do you see as Dave's unique gifts that he brings to the table and now he hurts? Well, Dave has a really unique gift in the sense that he used to be a rocket scientist. So he brings this engineering mindset to the center, and he does chiropractic and Ayurveda. And because of the rocket scientist training that he's had, he can look at a person in a very unique way. He can see, um, okay, this person's out of balance in this area, therefore it's affecting this area and this area, and his mind just works in that way. And it's, it's a wonderful way to look at a person, because then he sees you completely. So Jackie, in our next segment, you're going to be demonstrating pulse analysis on Mary Beth. Exactly what will be happening? Well, Mary Beth <laughs> <laughs> is going to be my victim, and we <laughs> are going to read the different layers of pulse. And the first pulse we're going to read is going to be what we call your Vikuti pulse, which is we're looking at her general imbalances and get the general feeling of what's going on with her right now. 
And then we're going to look at her pulse, her deepest pulse, to, to look at her prakruti pulse. Prakruti means the elements that you were born with, and that never changes. The elements that Ayurveda recognizes is air, ether, ether being lighter than air, it's space, fire, water, and earth. And that's just so we don't throw it out of balance. And then from there, we're going to look at several different layers of pulse, and we're going to determine which organs and which tissues are out of balance and in what way. Uh, For example, if I were to tell her, you have um, pitta in your liver, it would say maybe um, too much heat going on in your system. And um, that, that's the way we look at it. We look at the elements in the, in the organs that are out of balance. Oh, that sounds pretty fascinating. I'm excited. When we come back, I will get my pulses read by Jackie, so stay tuned. We're back, and I'm with Jackie Reed of Maui Herbs, who's going to demonstrate pulse analysis. I've just finished a very intense week of teaching hypnotherapy certification training at the University of Hawaii Maui College, so I'm very curious as to what she's going to find here today. So Jackie, how do you do pulse analysis? With women, we start with the left hand. What we're going to start with is your Vikruti pulse, which is your imbalances that you're going through right now. Uh oh. Okay? <laughs> okay. Your first pulse tells us that you have vata imbalances, which is air and ether. Now, this is the primary dosha or constitution, and it's actually the easiest dosha to bring into balance. Yeah. So, I'll, yeah, I'll give you some lifestyle changes that you might want to practice to help calm everything down. And what you're going to look for is nutritious foods, such as soups and vegetables and fruits, and try to stay away from salads or raw food right now, just oh. for a couple of weeks. Just let things settle down, okay? okay. You're also going to think about oil, because you want heavy, oily, nourishing foods and lifestyle changes. So what you're going to do is um, take a nice shower after you've taken an abhyanga, which is oil massage, so that can balance out your vata. Okay? Because what your pulse is saying right now in this layer is that you've been through a lot. So your, your life force, which we call ojas, your ojas are pretty low right now. So let's build those back up. Okay. Okay. So the next pulse I'd like to read is your prakruti pulse, which tells us your constitution that you were born with. Now that never changes. So let's take a look at it. And that would be the seventh layer. That would be pretty deep. And what we see is a lot of fire. We call it pitta, a little bit of fire and water. And so these are people that like um, control of their life. They're the go-getters in the world. I've heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, the reason I'm reading your prakruti pulse is because we want to know what your nature is so that we don't aggravate it when we're treating your imbalances. That's the only reason we need to know that. Okay? Okay. So what I'd like you to do also, if you don't mind, is to stick your tongue out so we can see what's going on with you. Okay. So you got a little bit of malabsorption going on. So that can come from maybe eating on the run or not eating the right foods. And... Um, you, you want to focus on your food, have consciousness when you're eating, and in that way, that malabsorption will go away. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to do two hands, and we're going to read what we consider superficial organs. And the reason it's superficial is because we know you can balance this out in a couple of days. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what's going on. We're looking at your small intestines and your colon. Very nice. 
Thank you. <laughs> and um, your gallbladder is doing really good. Your stomach is a little bit um, wanting some help. A little kapha, which is earth and water. Okay. And then the, uh, we're also going to read your bladder uh, and your pericardium. Pericardium is the sac around the heart. And we read it as emotional. And that's, those are people that are holding things mm -hmm. in their system. And they're having a hard time releasing it. Since we're in Hawaii, I always recommend Ho'oponopono or some practice like that. Or um, Sometimes they don't know what's going on. So going to a hypnotherapist such as yourself can really be beneficial to them. So now we're looking at your bladder. I see a little weakness in your bladder. So we can help you to strengthen that. Ashwagandha is a really great herb for helping that out. So now we're going to go to a deep level, and we're going to look at the more serious organs, the ones we take much more seriously. We focus on this ones more. So your lungs and your heart, very nice and strong. Now we're doing the liver and the spleen. And those are nice. Mm. Good. Good. Not everything is out of balance. No. Not, Good. We always have something, but we only have everything. Your kidneys um, are a little bit um, sluggish, so let's go ahead and, and plan on addressing that issue. So now, um, I don't need this hand anymore. We're done with that. So now we're going to read the subdoshas. So, um, when we look at the subdoshas, we're going to read your vata imbalances first. Vata is the elements air and ether, okay? And so, you already said I have something going on with that one, so. Absolutely, so we know we're going to find some stuff in there. So, we're going to look at your prana. Uh, many people know the word prana. It means the energy that you breathe in. And we're going to read the udana, which is the exhalation. So, let's see how that's going for you. So this is the third level in the pulse. And so this is the third level in the pulse. And we're going to look at your prana. Actually, you're breathing very nicely. Thank yeah. you. Do you take yoga? I have. Yeah. A lot of people that I do some kind of breathing practice. The have, hypnotherapy, I think, oh, too. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, that, would, that would help your breathing. And that's very, very important in Ayurveda, that bringing in that energy. Then we're looking at your energy circulation. We call it Viana. That's very nice. And now we're looking at your digestive in the Vata, in the Vata way. And um, that could use some help, some nourishment. So do you drink enough water? Usually I yeah. do drink a lot of water, but this morning I didn't. Okay. I'll give you a little trifle and some other things in your formula. We'll mix it up in your formula. We'll probably use Trifolash or Carrier. So now we're going to look at your Pitta, which is fire, a little bit of water, and we're going to see how that's doing. So your small intestines are actually doing very well. Very happy Good. to see that. And now we're looking at your Ranjak Pitta, which is the area. Um, actually, it's all this area here. It's your organs in this area. It's your liver, your kidneys, small intestines, pancreas, that kind of stuff. And it looks like it could a little bit hot, a little bit heated, like your liver, because you're pitta, so you got a little liver thing. So we can cool down the liver and the kidneys. And um, many times it overflows into the skin, so there's a little bit of pitta imbalance going on in the skin. And we're looking at the eyes, because eyes are pitta as well. And no sinus infection. <laughs> good. Yeah, good. Now we're going to go kapha. We're going to look at your kapha imbalances. And kapha is earth and water. So we look at your stomach. And so now, because remember we said earlier, stomach. So now we see what's going on. A little bit of kapha going on in your stomach, as well as a little bit of um, phlegm. And we, we consider phlegm, uh, the, the stomach being the storehouse of the phlegm. So that's where it's starting. So cloves are a good herb to take. Next, let's do your joints. Very nice. And um, that's the mouth and the head. All very nice. Oh, okay. Good. So now we're going to do your tissues. In Ayurveda, you have seven layers of tissue. And we don't 
necessarily read them in order, but um, you think of it like a waterfall. So you need to nourish the top ones to nourish the bottom ones. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to read your nervous system. And this is the fifth layer that we're going to. And what we see is vata, which means um, there's been a lot of um, trying to juggle four or five things going on. Yes. <laughs> is yes. that over, by the way? It's it time over, to yes. relax, okay. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, that's, that's the imbalance there. The next one that we're going to do is um, the female organs, okay, because we're going to do the artava, which is for the women, and chukras for the men. Artava is the um, uh, uterus. It also includes the breast as well for the, for the women. It's all, all those organs. And when I read your organs, it looks like it's a little bit um, low energy, so a little bit of... Um, Nourishment in that direction would be very nice. It would really make you feel a lot better. The next layer we're going to read is what we call Astida II, which is your bones, your hair, your nails, all these kinds of um, tissues. And um, you just could use a little bit of nourishment, but not really calling our attention to it. It's, 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 it's okay. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at your adipose system, your fatty tissue. Uh-oh. No, it's really actually very <laughs> good. good. Yeah, okay. it's very good. Doing nice. Now we'll look at your female organs again, this time looking at the hormones and adrenals and all that stuff. And it looks like uh, we can you can use a little boosting, so a little bit fatigue from your adrenals and That does thyroid. not surprise me. Yeah. You know, we can give you some ashwagandha for that. It's considered a male toner, but we give it for this purpose. Um muscles that's all very nice and so now we're going to read the blood we're going to look at the toxins and the whole blood thing and um, very nice and we go to the female thing again and then we get to rasa which is lymph nodes and lymphatic and that's all very nice very good, good. did you want to do the chak the chakras i know you um, sure. Yeah? Okay. We'll make that our, our last layer. Let's read your chakras. So that is going to be your sixth layer. And the first one we're going to read is your fifth chakra. And your fifth chakra is your throat. Very nice. Very, very spinning perfectly. Okay. So the next chakra is your crown chakra. That's also very nicely going. And then we do the sixth chakra. Are you psychic? I have a lot of intuitive abilities. Because your third eye is wide open. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. The next one that we're going to read is your third chakra. And that's your solar plexus. It's a little bit stressed. But then you've been through a lot lately. So, so that could use some, maybe put some crystals or something okay. here or the Bijan mantra. I'll, I'll give them to you later on and, okay. that, and you, can, you can chant something to help balance that out. Now we're going to look at your crown chakra again and the fourth one, which is your heart. Nice, wide open, mm -hmm. very loving person. And now we look at your first chakra, which we all know is the root chakra. And um, it's okay. I think you've done some work there. No? Good. Yes. Yeah, so the, the one that you really need to work on is your third chakra. And okay. that could be that you're exhausted and have no more power in you to share with the world anymore. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put an herbal formula together for you. Oh, yeah. great. And in Ayurveda, you don't just give a person an herb to take period. We put a whole formula together and there's a whole method of doing this. What we're going to do is we're going to address the nervous system and we're going to address the issues that you have going for you. So we see that you have some um, issues with the kidneys. So we're going to strengthen the kidneys. Fortunately, a lot of the herbs 
are going to work very nicely for many things that are going on with you. Oh, good. So we're primarily going to focus on the kidneys and on your um, what you've been through in the last couple of weeks. It's taken a toll on your body. So what I'd like to do is give you, let's write it down here, is give you some Brahmi. Brahmi is a very spiritual herb. It's one of my favorite herbs. What it does is it calms down the nervous system and it quiets the mind down and yet it opens up your heart to the universe. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. It sounds like we could all use some of oh, that. Oh yes, it's considered very sattvic. Sattvic means a very spiritual. Okay, then we're gonna do bring raj. Bring raj is very similar to Brahmi, but it's not as um, spiritual as Brahmi is. It's more earthy, it's more rajasic. And it goes into the liver and it cools down pitta, fire. So that little edgy thing going on will help to calm that down. Then I'd like to also give you some, one of my favorite herbs is Bumi Amalaki. And that, and I love That's the word That's easy anyway. for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> and Bumi Amalaki actually really helps with the kidneys to uh, it, it nourishes the kidneys. So we're going to give you that. Then we need a carrier. And we kind of talked already about giving you triphala as a, as a carrier. And I remember you nice. said ashwagandha a couple of times. Def, too. Thank you for reminding me. Ashwagandha is going to be one of your major ingredients. And um, let's give you some turmeric. Just a little digestive and inflammation and, and some things to help balance you out. And that's a nice formula for you. Well, wonderful. Yeah. So now let's talk about lifestyle changes. Okay. Because in Ayurveda, like um, you were explained in the beginning in the interview, um, Ayurveda is not just about herbs. It's about lifestyle changes. So in the beginning, I was telling you that vata, air and ether, is actually the easiest dosha to bring into balance. And it is in the sense that um, air and ether is up. It's like smoke and it's movable and it's dry. So you're going to do the opposites. So when you eat, I'm going to give you a food program to follow, and it's going to help to balance you out. And what you're going to eat is um, warm, oily, cooked cooked foods, okay? okay? A lot of vegetables, a lot of fruits, and um, that will help to balance you out. And then we have a practice called Abhyanga. And what you do is you get some nice sesame oil, and nice meaning organic and not the roasted kind. Right. So you want the clear one. And you're going to give yourself a massage before you take a shower. Leave it on for a few minutes, and then you can shower it off. All this helps. Now, before you go to sleep, a lot of times when you have the imbalances that you have, it's hard to fall asleep because the mind keeps going. Or if you do fall asleep, you wake up halfway through the night, and then it's hard to go back to sleep because the mind keeps going. And a good practice for that is just to get that oil and rub the soles of your feet with it right before going to sleep. And that helps to calm down the nervous system as well. Oil therapies are the things that are gonna really help um, to balance out your vata imbalances. Okay. Okay? That sounds good. Thank you so much, Jackie. I've learned a lot and I'm looking forward to initiating my lifestyle changes and taking my herbs. Hope you at home have also learned a lot about Ayurveda and pulse reading. And we'll be back in just a moment. So, Mary Beth, how was it? It was fascinating. I learned a lot, and I'm really looking forward to trying my custom herbal blend that Jackie's making up just for me. I'm sure that's going to balance you out and calm you down a little bit after that stressful week. I need it for sure. We'd like to thank Jackie and Dave Reed for taking time out of their busy schedule to join us today on this uh, episode of Maui Wellbeing. If you'd like to get in touch with them, check the credits at the end of the show. We do hope you've enjoyed this episode of Maui Wellbeing. Until next time, be, be well. well.